Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Agile Technical Tester. This is the very first tutorial of this particular series where we are getting started with the chapter one that is requirement engineering and looking at the contents here is only one topic but we do have two subtopics here and we are covering one of them in this particular tutorial. So the topic is requirement engineering techniques and the topic we are covering in this tutorial is analyze user stories and epics using requirement engineering techniques. Now generally when you talk about requirement engineering we do understand right from the foundation or even if you talk about agile technical tester uh, requirement engineering is all about how do you manage your requirements in different forms like how do you modify them put them into a technical format and determining the different dependencies, identifying the gaps or anything which is related to functional or non-functional requirements and making sure that it is reviewed and you have everything fulfilled as per the details which is required to further process them. So it is as usual like you know any traditional model which you have been performing or even if you talk about from your basics of Agile tester extension certification, it remains the same. But what is that we'll be trying and add on, add on to this uh, technique here is to understand more on the techniques. That what kind of techniques are more detailed to follow up during the requirement engineering phase and make sure that everything works according to the needs and everything is being fulfilled with all the necessary details at the beginning as well. Some of the techniques which we'll be talking in this particular tutorial is the storyboards, story mapping, personas, diagrams, and use cases. Now let's understand one after the other that what these techniques are and how does that really help us to understand the same. The very first technique to start off with is storyboards. Of course, these storyboards are not the one which you generally talk about like Agile task board or Agile user storyboard. These are the parent storyboards which generally help you to derive that how an exactly system works or has a dependency or control flow between different uh, stories altogether. So when you represent a uh, you know entire system on the a board with uh, explanation of sub stories and talking about the flow between them that how it moves from a particular module to another module is what you generally call it as storyboards and some of the salient feature of storyboards usage and help which we get from the storyboard is uh, it helps you to define the process behind the user story and also the overall story at all providing context, making it possible to quickly see the functional flow of the system and identify any gaps in the logic. So it's basically a logical representation which makes you understand about that. Visualize groups of user stories related to a common area of the system, which can be considered for inclusion in the same iteration as they will likely be touching the same piece of code either way. Assist in user mapping, uh, user story, <clears throat> Excuse me. Assist in story mapping and prioritizing of epics and related user stories in the product backlog, as you will be able to see everything of, with respect to the logic, would probably help you to do certain prioritization as well. Assist with identifying acceptance criteria for user stories and including epics. Assist with selecting the right test approach based on the visual aspect on the system design along with story mapping, assisting in the prioritizing of the test and in identifying the needs of a stub. So if we generally have a quick look here, we have a template which generally helps us to understand that what is a story board basically. So if we see this image here, it's just giving you an idea that how exactly a story board looks like, which is like having a product search, product intro, product engagement and product checkout, where the journey moves from on the left side, there are certain uh, user stories which we will be covering and then product intro comes into picture and there's a control flow involved which helps you to follow that how the things will move on and help us to understand that what exactly uh, the control flow will be and how much more you know the derivations would be required to do the job so that's one of the thing coming up next is the story mapping which is again uh, slightly different from the storyboard as one of the technique. 
when you talk about story mapping, it's basically to map different stories together and determine the priorities and determine the order of execution probably and determine what kind of functionalities will be dealt at what point of time. So this will help you to determine the complexity, any risk involved and prioritize your user stories accordingly to be released in different particular releases. So here some of the uh, comparison or the benefits which we have can have here to understand about story mapping are it helps testers to determine the most basic functionality of a system to distill it a uh, smoke test identify the order of functionalities to determine test priorities visualize the scope of the system and determine the risk level of each user story so quickly looking at another example which is uh, quite helpful for us to understand here if you look at the same point like product search, product page, and checkout. So we have actually filtered based on the prioritization and uh, looking at the complexity or any kind of risk involved, we have derived them into the simple formats like what will be delivered as a part of risk one, release one, what will be done as a part of release two, what will be in the backlogs, and so on. So that basically puts into a different, even you can have this in a uh, format of X to Y axis, which generally showcases that what uh, the time will be and what the priority of the test will be. So based on that also it can go, which is about uh, determining them on the story mapping scale, which is uh, X axis will have the time and Y axis will have your uh, priorities of this story. On the other side, another technique is personas. Personas are basically just like your bio, that what kind of users are there who will be using the system and each user credentials or details or their background will be listed to you in form of small cards which will showcase that this is one of the user profile and there's another user profile like student, professional, people from different backgrounds like banking. So you just create personas for each one of them and then you put it across to your team to understand and feel their shoe and then help them to uh, do the necessary jobs according to their profile. So this technique is basically helping testers to identify gaps in user stories by identifying different types of users that may be using the system, identifying inconsistencies in user stories and how a particular type of user may use the system compared to others. Elicitate user stories acceptance criteria as well because the user can definitely determine that what will be the criteria which would be required to accept the functionality. Discover additional test paths during exploratory testing based on the user-based uh, executions and reveal test conditions, especially those related to a particular user group. So again, if you look at a quick example of what exactly are the personas, so you can have a look here. Uh, it's just like you know, a username, which is like Peter, and what kind of background he comes from, what is the age, what kind of experience he holds, and has he involved with some specialities, and details of that. So you can have your own custom personas created based on the user story or the requirement which is provided to you and looking at the end user uh, groups, user groups, you can create them and then based on that you can look forward to evaluate your product. Further to continue, we have also a few techniques like diagrams, which we have been using for a long time, like creating simple diagrams, class diagrams, UML diagrams, which shows the control flow or data flow between the modules, will be really helpful for you to determine that what comes first and what comes next, and also what kind of dependency each of these modules hold with them, and also determining the integration and system testing to make it simple and easy. To help you own the functional attributes or behavior of the system, diagrams are very helpful and quite create a simple way to identify any gaps in the system functionality. Whereas use cases are another techniques to do the same job, but of course this comes with a different approach. We have learned this in foundation, even in Agile found in tester, tester extension, that is it is more helpful uh, when it comes with a use case diagram from a user perspective. It is basically an interaction between the system and the user with what system says, what user responds, again, what system comes back with, and how system further uh, asks the users to do that job. So it is a real-time interaction between the system and the user for a particular transaction or particular activity. So that gives a more verbal kind of you know, outline about any functionality which happens on the product. And that 
will definitely help you a lot to understand that how basically a user will interact with this product and can help you to derive a lot of test cases or I would say a lot of efficient test cases. So some of the uh, helpful uh, outputs of use cases, usages, like it helps testers to ensure user stories are testable and properly sized as well, determine whether the user stories need to be refined or decomposed Probably, you know, you may no longer require that, and this is not possible, then you can remove them. Reveal forgotten stakeholders. You know, sometimes use, uh, use cases help you to determine that there were some stakeholders, and you may not have considered in your for you know, detailed understanding of that. So use cases displays those control flow, which generally helps you identify missing areas as well. Identifying interfaces and integration points, which should be considered during test design and also to see the relationship between the epics as well as the user stories to check that the epic doesn't have any missing user stories as well. So user story just is not about a particular functionality. You can internally also use it for the requirement gathering phase where you can relate that whether this is a user story is a part of it and then if it is covered so far, then what about the other functionality which is supposed to be a part of it. So putting it all together, these are the different techniques which we can understand or use as a part of requirement engineering, which helps you to determine the user stories. So team, that's all from this particular tutorial. I'll be getting back to you with the next tutorial of this chapter, and then following that, the sample questions on that. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team, and happy learning.